Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. We are having a fun, fun episode today. We're going to be discovering how to step into being sexy. Because if you're not feeling sexy and people are like, you're so sexy, but you're like, I'm not feeling it. Sometimes you just got to like figure out how to like step into that energy that maybe other people see you as or that you would like to see you as. And we're going to play with some tools and tips today on how to step into sexy. Before we dive deeply into that, uh, for those of you who are listening, I am a coach for many things, but one of them is for sex and intimacy. And if you're thinking, damn, how do you get a job being a sex and intimacy coach? Uh, you take some training, which is helpful. You have a comfort level with talking about sex and intimacy. That's also really helpful. And then you work your ass off for people to show up. Having a radio show podcast on Inspired Choices Network has also been super helpful to get the word out so people know that I actually do this as well. And what else I do in my life is that I work with people on their health and well-being, and I work with them to try and create ease in their bodies so that they have it through physical body, through their emotional body, through all different levels of their body and being. That's really my target is to offer a holistic approach to, uh, to wellness through inc and including uh, sexual wellness as well. Now, something that I found that when I first started working was that a lot of people who were coming to me would secretly tell me things like, okay, well, I, I, you know, I'd like you to work on something for me regarding um, this infection I have. And then secretly, ps, 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 I also have issues with sex. And I was like, psh, 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 you're not the first person who said that to me in my lifetime. And it took me a while to actually get that people saw in me something that I didn't even know in myself. People saw in me something about having a comfort level, about talking to them about their bodies, about pleasure, about what's going on in their bodies. If it was like women who were not feeling it, men who had erectile dysfunction, I got all these secret little chats on the side. And I, I was always fascinated that people saw this in me. And for a long time, I didn't say anything about it. I was just like, okay, let's just look at this. And then um, at a point in my life, I chose to get some background, get some backing. It, I felt more comfortable putting myself out in the world as a sex and intimacy coach with actually having some training behind that. It's helpful. For me, it's helpful. So that's what I did. And that's what I'm offering to you is a lot of tips and tools from different training modalities that I have learned over the years. I've been working with bodies and people and energy work for 24 years now. So it's been a long time. Uh, 24, 23, 24 years. I don't even know anymore. 24, 1997 is when I started. So 24 years. How is that even possible? Some of you are looking at me going, but girl, aren't you 26? Did you start when you were two? And technically, I actually did start when I was two that I'm aware of. However, I didn't have a shingle out and I didn't charge at the age of two, but I was putting my hands on bodies and healing them at the age of two. I had a crazy, crazy capacity to find uh, illness in bodies as a, as a young child. And I would just kind of walk up to people and slap my hands on as this is the story as my father told me that first he kind of berated the fact that I was going to do healing work. And then he went, well, you've been doing it your whole life and this is what you did. So that's always fascinating to me too, that other people know things about you that you don't know about you. So sometimes in this discovery of who you are, how you be sexy and all that jazz, sometimes it's about listening to what other people know about you. And don't take it personally, just take it as end notes, side notes, little things to consider. Because sometimes there's value in those. So 
when we're going to look at things to consider on this episode, we're going to look at all kinds of things to do with not only your physical body and how you can maybe walk, have a stance, have a movement that's extra sexy, but we're also going to look at how to have the energetics that no matter what you're looking like, girls and boys and all genders in between, you can absolutely have the energy of sexy. Now, some people chalk up sexy um, in different ways, right? So got to get you to see that sexy is very, very much a scale, the gray scale. It's the 50 shades of gray scale of sexy. So what we're going to be figuring out today is what's sexy for you. And these tools are interchangeable, whether you, um, you know, are attracted to somebody with a certain uh, body type or whatever, that all of these tools are going to become uh, usable for you in your own way, right? So that's what we're going to play with. These are kind of universal tools to discover how to step into your sexy. One of the things for me was I never in my life considered myself sexy ever until my husband informed me of it. And I, I know that's weird. It's like, you never felt that? Like, um, not, I'm not saying looking at me, you're going to think that, hey, you're really sexy. But there are times for people when they, in their life, they felt sexy. That was not my reality. Um, I was curious about sex, curious about bodies. And I also have a reality check that I, I'm not the person who's going to have a face that's on a, um, on a magazine. Like, that's just not my look. I don't, I don't fit the, uh, the perfect look that's all over social media. I don't have the, the duck lips to do, you know, duck lips uh, things. I've tried it and I think it looks ridiculous on me. So there are a lot of things that qualify as sexy these days that are not sexy for me. And how do I know when I'm being sexy? is because my body literally feels like laughing and being turned on at the same time. And that's usually when I am my most sexy. So everybody's got their own most sexy moments. And one of the things to ask is, what is sexy to me? So for me, what is sexy to me in other people is their sense of humor, um, their way of having banter, Banter is a word we use in Canada, right? Like, I think I watch a lot of British TV, so I love the word banter. And so there's banter. And um, there are different ways that we can relate to each other that to me is sexy. So if I've got somebody who loves innuendo, and sexual innuendo, and is like willing to play word games with me, puns all over the place, that for me is very sexy. I love it. And I also love somebody with a brain I love when people think out of the box. Um, I, I was asked before I dated my husband by somebody, who's the kind of person you would like want to date? And it was somebody that I um, was uh, co-parenting my daughter with at the time. I was like, if you, you know, who would you want to date? And I was like, well, uh, I, named, I named the person. And I was like, this person would be the person I'd want to date because they have all these characteristics. It happens to be the person who's my husband right now. At the time, he was single. He had just been um, broken up with somebody. And I was like, actually, if there was somebody just like him in the universe, that's who I'd want to date. That's who I'd want to be with. He has similar interests to me. He laughs about things. He's willing to argue uh, with me about his point of view. Um, and it's not a huge argument. It's just like, this is what I believe. And then it's, um, sometimes it's like a door that opens me into something else. And sometimes my point of view will open the door for him into something else. And I love being able to, and for some people, that's like an argument for us. It's like a door opener. So I love that. And I love people that I can have conversations with that open my mind in my eyes and that they are like right out there. Their thinking is right out there. So I love that. And I'm just going to move some things on. So what I love about banter and having people have great conversations with me is that my body gets turned on by connecting with people's minds. If I had to label myself as any kind of sexual, I am definitely a sapiosexual. And sapiosexuals are attracted to people's minds. So 
I was recently watching this show on Netflix because sometimes I just got to watch something stupid to help my brain go off called Sexy Beasts. I also picked it because back in the day, seven years ago, one of my episodes was called Sexy Beasts. And then I was like, hey, Netflix, you got my episode name. <laughs> so I, uh, I was curious. I watched it and it's the kind of show that I would thrive at because I'm all about the personality. So people are wearing masks and they have to go on dates with masks and uh, figure out their personality and their energies, um, whether they're going to like the person as a person before seeing their actual face. And um, to me, that is my reality. I, I have a weird thing where I don't really see the physical in people unless it's very obscure and somebody has like a, a goiter that fascinates me and like the goiter is the size of a football and I'm like wow that's a fascinating goiter and then I'll remember them as football goiter person like that's just how I'll remember them however that's not usually how it goes most people do it's not a distinguishing thing about their features that reminds me of them or makes me think of them or has me admire them for me it's all about the brain so no for you, what is sexy to you? And if you are attracted to people who are super intelligent and you don't feel like you are, maybe it's time to like get some more education, figure some things out. What are you curious about? Are you somebody who's like into, you know, people who are spiritual, but you're not doing a spiritual practice yourself? Start a spiritual practice. If you're into people who are business oriented and you are thinking that you're like, well, I love people who are business oriented, but you, you really are not that yourself. The thing is, we tend to attract people who are quite a lot like us. There will be some differences, but stepping into sexy is really sexy is that energy that attracts people. So we're looking at how do we attract people and how do we step into an energy of being attractive? Figure out what is sexy to you, what attracts you, and keep choosing into that. What is it like for you? Like, what is it about a person that has you um, like really excited to be around them? Is it their wit? Is it their, their kindness? Is it their touch? What is it? And then you can start asking you yourself, I wonder what it would be like to step into more of that for myself. I wonder what it would be like to be that. So, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to feel intelligent. Oh, there's an idea. Like if you don't feel intelligent, you just might be, but you just haven't ever really acknowledged it. You know, in a room full of like, say Nikola Tesla, if I took all the geniuses, if I took Aristotle, Nikola Tesla, if I took like uh, Marie Curie, I took a whole bunch of geniuses, plop them in a room, I'd feel pretty, pretty um, not that intelligent. So if you're not feeling that intelligent, you just might be hanging out with super geniuses and you're comparing yourself to super geniuses and um, you may have your own genius in a different way. So just check, like, who are you hanging out with that you're judging yourself as, as not intelligent enough or whatever, or not this enough. So a lot of times, if you're feeling like you're not enough, you're comparing yourself to someone or something. And who is that someone or something? And why do you think they're so great? And do you get that you might be that too? So how do you step into sexy with that? First of all, it's an observation. First, you've observed what it is you feel is sexy. So observation helps. And learning to observe helps as well. And if you don't know how to observe, take a seat, go look outside at some birds. That's an observation. Notice how they move, notice how they interact. Notice how they play with each other. Um, I'm an avid bird watcher. I have birds outside my living room window that I can see because my living room and, and kitchen are very open. And I can see from my kitchen when I'm chopping food, I can look out my window of my dining room and I can see birds at my bird feeder. And so I can observe a lot. I observe a lot of nature all the time and its behavior. Um, and that is fun to me. I love watching. I'm quite the observer. So. That is something that I recommend is observe it. See, see what it is that turns you on in others. And then start to ask 
how you can be that energy. Because a lot of the times, if you're getting into some situations where you're not feeling so sexy or you don't feel like the person's attracted to you, chances are you haven't actually stepped into fully your potential of being what you feel is like your sexy self. And or you're also defining sexy based on one person's point of view. So when I was saying to you earlier, I didn't know I was sexy until my husband said something to me about that. I was like, so what is it? What is it that you think makes me sexy? I was curious. Uh, and uh, he was like, if you don't get that you just are, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I was like, that's a nice one. Thanks so much. But um, he, he did further explain. He's like, I think you need to like watch some things about yourself and just see like how people are attracted to you. Then you'll get that you're sexy. But you can't see that yet. And so he, he actually, it's kind of funny, kind of did his own little coaching on me and um, had me observe how I, uh, how I am with people and how people uh, do react to me. So that was helpful and why they react. And it's not because I'm wearing fancy clothes. Um, most of the time, honestly, it's because I'm walking in there openly, um, not judging them. And I have, I have a, a client that recently said to me, you know, I think I love you. I'm like, is that so? He's like, I don't really know why. I'm like, that's okay. He's like, is that weird? I'm like, not really, because is there anybody else in your life that doesn't judge you? And he's like, I don't think so. I'm like, well, take some time. There are, his, you know, probably his kids and his wife, and he has a lot of friends, probably them too. But if you've never noticed it before, you might not realize it. So just check if, you know, if you are sexy because you're not in judgment of people. And then you kind of become open and people are just like, I don't know why I'm interested in you. I've also had women tell me that they're kind of in love with me and they don't know why. And I'm like, thank you. I, um, in my lifetime growing up, my mother was not a person who used the words, I love you. And in the last like few months, I, I can't even tell you how many men and women have told me out loud that they love me. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll have to. Um, it's something that I sought out. I sought it out for most of my life. I wanted to hear that I was loved. And that was not my mother's love language. So she couldn't offer that to me. She does it in different ways. She does acts of service and gifts and um, quality time. Like those are her main ways, right? So words were not her thing. And um, so it was weird for me growing up, kind of desiring a little bit of that, not really understanding if I was loved, if I wasn't told that I didn't know if I was loved. So now that it doesn't matter to me, I'm hearing it from everywhere. I'm hearing it from women in their 70s, women in their 30s, men in their 70s. It's coming at me from all angles, which is really cool. And I'll receive it. And it's very fun and interesting to observe this pile of love. Um, including some of my, um, including some like children who have like informed me that they love me too. And I'm like, that's awesome. So I, I'm like super grateful for all of that uh, for sure, because there is such beauty in being able to allow people to love you. That's one of the gifts too. That can be incredibly sexy, allowing people to admire you and love you. Isn't that weird that that is actually a sexy quality? For me, it's what has me feel sexy is allowing people to love me. And it took me a lot to be able to let total, what we call strangers almost, say that to me out of the blue and, uh, and be okay with it and not make it into something of a big deal, right? And just receive their appreciation, their kindness, their gratitude, and that's their way to show gratitude. So cool. So there is there is a lot to what is sexy do you get how it's very different for everybody do you get how you know your mind might be sexy to some people or your um there are cer certain qualities and if you're really looking for like the ability to main sex like maintain sexiness your whole life it's it's good to know who you are so that you can be confident in that not cocky and arrogant because that's not that sexy, for maybe for a split half of a second, and then it gets ugly. 
So confidence, and you can create confidence with the way you walk and move too. Um, I've been told that I look confident in the way I walk, but that's only in the last 10 years because of body work that I do that has my body more aligned. So it looks like you know, my body physically looks confident because of the way I walk. So that's another thing you can do that can be incredibly sexy is have movement that has you walk in a way that's very confident and sexy, puts out a different energy, has people go, hmm, that's intriguing. What is that? It's foreign because a lot of people don't walk with confidence. They either walk with arrogance or they're trying to hide themselves there. So there isn't a lot of confidence in the physical body of just being and showing up. Oh, I am so like going on a rant. So we're going to head to our first commercial break. You are listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers, my sexy, sexy muffins and all that jazz. Sexy muffins. I actually call my husband many sexy things like sexy monkey and uh, sometimes even things like sexy muffin because that is, it is. Sometimes you just are a sexy muffin, let's face it. So I say that because what, what gets you um, feeling sexified? Like what has you feel like you're sexy? And um, some things will help you feel sexier than others. And the, I think one of my, you know, my terms of endearment um, will, they definitely get my husband laughing and um, playful. And for me, playfulness is such a key to sexiness. If you're like super serious, I don't find that sexy, but that's me. And some people need that. Some people need super serious people. Um, to to look them all the time in the face and just be like serious constantly um that for me is so uh um, that for me doesn't work but that's just me so what is sexy for you and then start to choose that more and more sexy for me is being playful it's being spontaneous it's being um all kinds of things that i've mentioned intelligent funny and and having the energy of vulnerability so sexy so when i call my husband uh, cute names like sexy monkey and sexy muffin and sexy pants i have many names for him and uh, he's also lord centerline as i am lady centerline we have lord and lady names for each other these are all playful sexy ways for us to engage with each other 
And so if you do have a lover and you'd like to have some playful engagement, come up with some like sexy names you can call each other that are fun and playful and silly and not super serious, but they open the energy so that you can have a little giggle, have a little laugh. And having a little giggle and a laugh is a great way to break energy open. You know, in most MLM companies, if you've ever been invited into one, there's always the icebreaker. Let's meet each other. Why? Because they know that when people get together, there's usually tension of some kind and everybody's like figuring out who's who's doing what and what's happening. And there's so many projections and expectations being thrown out constantly that uh, there needs to be something to crack that energy open and icebreakers are meant to crack energy open. So have some fun uh, in order to create a little bit of play and sexiness in your relationship. Sexiness does not have to be serious. And I'm sure that you've watched porn where porn seems very serious. And the, the, I don't know, I have not watched that much porn in my life. Um, I've watched like educational videos that are very serious because they're like educational. And there, there is this um, intensity to them. And yes, that might be attractive to quite a few people. And maybe some playful funness would also be attractive. So in real life, as not in porn, we actually need things to make us laugh and, you know, have fun and play. It, you know, there's a, like a super lack of it in the world right now. And there was an author, I don't know if he's still alive, Andrew Whale. And he, I believe it was him, he healed himself from cancer with laughter. He would intentionally watch things and shows that would just make him bust a gut laughing because laughter can switch the energy up really fast. So finding something on a daily basis to have you laugh can help you bring in, in the sexiness as well. It will get your body into a different mode. You'll be letting off different pheromones and hormones. You're going to be more chill so that you can actually receive people. And that can be super helpful to you. So a little bit of laughter can definitely help you appear more sexy for sure. And everybody's got a different sense of humor. So you'll find that you're probably attracted to people who have the same kind of sense of humor as you. And so that would be completely, uh, it's completely normal. So what is your, what makes you laugh too? And what, so, so things that make you laugh when you see them, you're also going to know that probably the person that you're attracted to the most will also find a lot of that same similar things quite funny because there's something that you're in tune with that you're going to be able to um, you're going to be able to laugh with each other, laugh at each other, and things can be a lot lighter. Sexiness is actually a very light energy. And even though the energy on this show is interesting because it keep, it has this dip to it every once in a while as, as I'm like perceiving what's going on. And so for me, there's this requirement to keep the energy light, to keep the energy light so it's an invitation. And so when I, when I am with people, uh, that is my one of my things unless somebody asks me something and, it, and it's actually the information is more dense than that will happen too but for the most part it's truly to have an energy of lightness so if you're thinking that energy has to, that sexiness has to be something where you just like walked in you got the serious face you got the duck lips going you're like trying so hard there is no trying in sexy Oh, let me just put that out there. There's actually no trying in sexy. It's actually about being yourself more and more and more. Because sexy, as much as it can have something to do with the way we look, because somehow people, we do respond to that um, quite a lot. We, we are visual creatures for those of us who have sight. And for, the, for those who don't have sight, they get to have a completely different response to bodies. They get to have the energetic responses to bodies. And, and all the sensory, other sensory responses to bodies. So knowing that there's no trying in sexy, when you think that you haven't been sexy, just ask what have you, you know, ask yourself, like, what have I been trying to do that's, that's not working? Am I trying to impress? Am I trying to be something I'm not? Am I trying to be more than I can offer? Am I trying 
am I trying to be loved? Am I trying to be accepted? Am I trying to be seen? Anywhere where you're trying dips the energy out of sexiness and into desperation. So I just want to ask the crowd out there, like, do you find desperation sexy? Probably not. And whenever the energy of trying comes in, do you find that sexy? If a person is engaging with you and asking you questions about your life, that isn't necessarily trying, right? That's more like engaging. So trying has a real kind of a push to it that can feel uh, obtrusive. It's like they're in your face and in your space. And so when you feel that like uh, push, if you don't know what to do with that energy, because some people can have a lot of that, just you can just melt yourself down just like receive them and receive them and receive them. Um, it's not your job to see them necessarily as sexy, but what a gift it could be to even just receive them for what they are showing up, even in their intensity of pushing and trying to prove something. I find that if I receive people when they're trying to, to prove something, they usually give up. What does that mean? Like, how do you receive somebody when they're, you know, being pushy? Um, I usually get kind of quiet and I let them do and be what they need to be. And I just be in, uh, I just ask myself to expand and expand some more and expand some more and expand some more and expand some more. That's it. It's that easy. And you'll notice likely that when you do ask for that, that your energy does get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then the person can just be and do what they need to do. But a lot of times it'll shift and go away. So that's something to consider. If you've been trying really hard to show up as sexy, then maybe there's something where that energy is appearing desperate. So let's take away the desperation and let's look at the value of you. Like there are valuable things about you that you don't even maybe even realize that you have about you. And you know, whether it is that you have a fabulous ass or something, show off your asset. If you do have some, you know, fabulous ideas, if you're somebody who's like a massive creator and you have a million ideas, one of the ways that you can um, be sexy with ideas is to give people tidbits of your ideas so that you have them longing for more. If you, if you ever go to like a food tasting and they just give you like a little bit of something that's absolutely delicious, it keeps you like in the, mm, I like want more of that. So if you are a super creator with a great mind and you have tons of ideas and you just like explode with ideas, give them just a little bit. So they get a little taster. It's a little bite. And they want to come back for more. That is one way to be you with all your great ideas and also to be able to um, utilize some of your skills to have people attracted to you. So there's a lot of different ways you can work with who you are, not have to change you and still be considered sexy to yourself and also to whoever is potentially going to be attracted to you. It, it was. Um, I think we're actually we're going to head to our, we're around the timeline. I'm not sure for our next commercial coming up soon, but I, um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about just before going to break is that you'll probably notice in the show that I keep going back to whatever it is that you find is sexy is that you need to, uh, you need to start to look at that and then start to choose more into whatever it is that you find is sexy being that yourself, right? So when I was maybe in my 20s, I didn't really know what I found sexy. What I thought was sexy was a certain um, body type maybe or a look. I tended to date a lot of guys who looked like the same and um, all of them were insecure. Why? Because I was insecure. I attracted a lot of insecure people because I was insecure. That's what happened. That's what happens when we're young, usually anyway. Then, you know, as I started to go through different things in my life, as I was working out my, some of my um, core issues and really getting into some of my healing, 
the more things would arise about my how my relationships are very um, much related to some of my core issues with my uh, my parents, whatever it was that I hadn't healed with my parents. And so that went on for a few years as well. And then as I started to become more aware of that, uh, I didn't have to judge it anymore. So I used to judge it as wrong. I had a lot of, uh, you know, healers would be like, well, that's, that's, you know, you don't want to date your dad. I'm like, well, as much as my dad can be, have all these like black characteristics, he also had some characteristics I liked. So why are you going to throw the baby out with the bathwater? That's what I started to wonder is like, what is it I'm attracted to? And it's not that you have to throw it all away. What is it that you like? And what is it that you don't like? And so those are some things you can look at. What do you find sexy? Make yourself, you know how I love three columns. Make yourself three columns. What do you absolutely find sexy? It's like every time you see it, feel it, hear it, smell it, your body is like, damn, that's sexy. Um, one of my best friends, we have a thing going with a uh, tort. So a couple of weeks ago, I sent him a picture of Dubbush tort because I was like, oh my God, this is like one of the sexiest things I've seen in a long time. And his response was, damn, that is such a turn on. <laughs> So <laughs> that's awesome. I, I love that. And there are things, and even as I'm talking about it, my body just like lights up. There are things, you know, turn you on. And so in my turn on column, double torta is in my turn on column. And then there are things that definitely don't turn me on. Um, definitely don't turn me on is like um, other things as well. So some things I find very sexy. I do actually find uh, European torts very sexy. <laughs> and I find mine sexy. I find certain senses of humor, especially puns. I find them very sexy and people who can work them. Um, I, I also find there's so many things I find sexy. One of the sexiest body parts to me is actually calves on men. I find calves like a really good calf on a man is man is like one of the mm, look, I mean, just like eat it. I just love it. So <laughs> calves are super freaking sexy and so I actually try and like have sexy calves every once in a while I'm like hmm, are my are my calves as sexy as I'd like them to be because it's something I love in a person's body and I know it's it's weird it's like it doesn't matter if you got six calves that's I'm on it and so uh look at those things like what do you find sexy and what do you absolutely find not sexy so one of the things I don't find sexy is arrogance. I really, I really find it a turn off. I find passive aggressive a turn off. Um, I find sociopathic behavior a turn off. Um, I don't find it sexy. So there, and there are some things that I find negotiable within that sociopathic stuff. Like I do like some, some ability to take risks and be spontaneous. So there is some negotiability on some of those characteristics of a sociopath, but the it's not the whole path. I don't really, I'm not turned on by liars or anything like that. So what is it that you find sexy? I bet when you really look at it, you're going to find more and more that it's about the person and not about their looks. So then, you know, when you go to get into the dating zone, if, if you can, you know, if you could just be on sexy beasts and not look at each other's faces and you could just get to know each other as people, you might find that you really, really, um, there are people that you really like that you never would have expected that you would have fallen in love with um, because they're not your type or something, right? So what is sexy really comes down to, yes, there are physicalities that are sexy, but there are other things that are way more, more enticing that will keep you more interested for way longer because you know what, people, bodies change. You could end up in a car accident and lose your legs. You could end up, you know, in a coma and like not be able to talk. So it's the person. It's the person. So if you got the person, then that that's the energy that you want to work with. It's not about their looks. It's not about any of that. It's about who they be. If you find them sexy as a person, then you got something worth having. So... I, rem I remember uh, watching my husband put up a wall in my house and thinking, damn, that is sexy. Did it in like five minutes. And I was like, whoa. 
so his skills, I find skills sexy. I find somebody with a skill set and the ability to create and like create physical things. I didn't even realize how much I found it sexy till I saw him build a wall one day uh, years ago before we were dating. And I went, whoa, that's, that is, that was the best porn I ever saw was a wall being built. <laughs> it's, it's so fun. And yes, um, as my friend and producer tonight is saying, laughter uh, and making me laugh is sexy, 100%. Somebody can make me laugh. Oh my Lord, that's the best. I will just sit and laugh all night and I'll probably orgasm just you know, laughing my head off because you can, you can actually laugh yourself into orgasm for sure. It's like a bliss energy. And <laughs> it's ecstasy, right? And ecstasy can do so many things. That ecstatic energy can be so many things for us and heal our minds, our bodies, our lives. So such beautiful stuff. So we're going to come back and talk more about how to step into being more sexy after this commercial break. Are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. If you guys aren't in the chat, you're missing out on a great conversation. And I'm not going to share it with you guys because it's almost private. And at the same time, it's fabulous. So... When you, when you ever get a chance to join in the chat room, you might find there are some pretty funny conversations that go on, ideas and things that get mixed up in here. But um, as my producer was uh, sharing some fun ideas with me on how we could use the commercial that you just heard about masturbating for money, how we could uh, pull that off. She's got ideas. She's got cameras involved. It's going to be fun. So I like it. I like the creativity. It's awesome. <laughs> So yay, thanks for that. I didn't give all the details, darling, so it's good. We're good, <laughs> but it's great. So what do you find sexy, guys? So I kind of give you guys some, some tips, and I don't know if you missed them. You might have missed them. So I'm going to recap on this. So one of the tips is 
What do you find sexy? I want you to make a list of what you find sexy. And then right beside that, I want you to do a check mark on every one beside that to see, are you that? So just check mark. If, if one of the things that you say is um, intelligence or things out of the box, you find that sexy in other people, and then go down that beside it. If you are that, check it off. That's one way you can pull, pull this uh, homework off. So when I ask you to check on what do you find sexy and then step into being it, first, you might already be that. So evaluate your list. What do you find sexy? Are you being it? Okay, so that's one, one home play you can do. Another one is that you can look at what you absolutely find sexy and things that absolutely turn you off and things that you're willing to work on. Yeah, so it's like your mediocre list, the things that you're maybe unsure of, but you're willing to work on. So maybe in my mediocre list, one of the things I might be willing to do is um, ask my body about some clothes because my as much as my clothes were sexy for my body when I first bought them, they may have changed. So every once in a while, I go through my closet and I'll ask my clothes and my body if my body still finds these clothes sexy. Like, body, do you find this sexy? Body, would you like to, you know, I have a bunch of questions I ask my body about the clothes. And it may be time for my body to have new clothes. I've been seeing um, way more things of uh, like, like, like long V-necks that kind of go down. And my body gets quite lit up by seeing those. And I don't have the same body as the women wearing them by any case. But if my body is turned on by that, it might wear it in the way that it, it feels sexy. And that's that is really the key is your body is going to feel different in different things. If you're wearing certain clothes, you may have feel comfortable in some stuff, which also helps you feel a little bit sexier because your body is turned on and calm at the same time or whatever. That can be a level of sexy for sure. Calm confidence. And then there's this other feeling that you're, you know, you can wear some clothes where your body is just like zing. It just like totally has a different vibe to it where it's, um, it's like, say, wearing uh, a negligee that is maybe silky and your body just loves the feeling. So even having the silkiness touch your skin will just turn you on by just experiencing that, that feeling. So looking at some of those things, too. So one of the things that I'm willing to do is definitely go through my clothes and check on which ones uh, my body still feels sexy in and which ones it would like to keep around. Um, and, and I'm already aware of some that I, I'm ready to let go of. They, uh, they don't necessarily work for my body shape um, anymore. Like my body doesn't enjoy wearing them anymore. It's like they're tight or they're uncomfortable or whatever. So that's something to consider. Your body will know that. And then there might other be other things that you're willing to um, to change for yourself or to explore. You might be willing to explore Say, for example, if you find spirituality sexy or somebody who's into spirituality and you find it sexy, then one of the things to do would be to be willing to explore some things that you find intriguing about, you know, that. If you're like, wow, it's really sexy that person meditates. Well, so maybe it's time to go and explore that. If you find, you know, somebody who can like channel... I don't know, beings from another planet sexy, then maybe it's time to go take a class on how to channel beings from another planet. So you will start to be, it's not that you have to do it for a living, right? It's just that you can start being that energy that you find sexy. Because the chances are, if you find it sexy in somebody else, then other people will find it sexy in you too. But there's there's usually hidden gems that we're, we haven't revealed to ourselves yet. And these hidden gems are, things that we think are only in other people and we can't see them in ourselves yet. And these are our gems that can be buffed and polished and turned into beautiful tiaras of sexiness. So look at some of those things that can be buffed and polished about you that are already there. They're just, you know, they haven't been mined for a while. They haven't been looked at. So you get them out and you polish them off and you play with them and you wear them on yourself in different ways. So that's interesting. There's, um, 
And there's a comment in the chat room that TikTok is proven that that is true. So people are like finding new um, sexiness. I'm not on TikTok, so that's an interesting one. Um, that finding something sexy in someone else, uh, you also have in you. That's cool if TikTok did prove that because I know they do a lot of like experiment things on there. I just don't know a lot about TikTok. So, so I'm curious what other people are are finding attractive. Um, I had a guest on the show years ago, JP Sears. Um, you might see him on social media. He's he's an interesting character. I find his mind um, very sexy because he's he's just uh, he's bold. He's out there. He's got lots of I ideas and thoughts um, and he's got rebel energy and I love rebels too. I have a thing for people who are willing to fight for themselves and fight for humanity. I love that. Um, and I also, yes, also kindness and vulnerability. I find that super sexy too. There are, and you might look at two um, different actors and actresses that you find uh, sexy. So for example, my husband loves, uh, her name's Rania Green. Anyway, he loves this actress and everything she's ever been in, we own it. We don't just like have it on Netflix, like we own the DVD of her in it. And um, he'll also give me the lowdown of how often she's like naked in, in each movie. He's like, well, this is the one where he's like, where she's like 99% of the time naked. I'm like, honey, she's like 99% naked in all the ones that are not for 12 and under. So that's who she is. She's the naked woman. Um, in every single movie that I've ever seen her in, she is like a dark witch who has like crazy skills. In every single one, she's a psychic. In every single one, she has crazy wicked capacities. And she, in every single one too, she's, she's willing to use the crap out of men. And it's really funny because... Exactly. In the chat room, my, my friend saying, uh, no wonder he chose you. Uh, it's really, yeah, it's quite funny. As much as we look nothing alike, Ronnie Green, she's got like these incredibly uh, unique color eyes and black, black hair and like double D boobs. And she's like very thin. Like we don't even have remotely the same body. We have a lot of, um, I have a lot of the characteristics of her characters, which is quite funny. And I have um, I, and so I kind of laugh at it. I'm like, oh, look at you. You're so in love with a woman that's actually got, and he knows it. Like he knows that he's actually got his like real life Rania. So it's quite cute. And if I look at like things that have attracted me in my life, um, and, and if I were to go, yeah, that's like I said before, when somebody asked me if, you know, if you're, what's your ideal relationship? And I named all these qualities and I was like, oh, and in that, I realized who that was and who I was referring to is actually the person I'm married to. So it's, um, you will find that you know, because you're going to start naming things about qualities about people. And some of them you're going to go, oh, okay, well, I haven't really stepped into that part of myself yet. So maybe if I do, I will attract that person that I truly would love and would also be in the same kind of divine timing energy that chooses to be with you too. So what do you do in a minute and a half to explain how do you get back into sexy if you've dropped out of it? Well, what you do is you go through this process again. If you feel like you've dropped out of sexy, just re-listen to the show and do all of this all over again. Because it will change, guys, over time, your vision and view of sexy will absolutely change. And hopefully, Hopefully, as you mature, uh, the sexy is really about the quality of person and not about their butt size or their penis size or their boob size. Hopefully, that changes. And yes, bodies are still attractive and delicious and yummy. And there's something about the person that's wearing that body that is actually super attractive too. Right? So we're just wearing these bodies. So who's inside of that? You know, if you're wearing your shirt, you're wearing your body too. So what's underneath all of that? And what do you absolutely find sexy about that person? Step into it. So next week, we're going to have a show all about uh, tastes, sounds, and smells that are turn-ons. It's going to be fun. It's a little bit like aphrodisiacs, 
a little bit more information on that. So stay tuned in and turned on until next week. Have lots of fun. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.